Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This, however, is our third day of Podmas where we're putting out an episode every day in the lead up to Christmas. So today we've got Netflix 271st film from 2020. It's the Spanish thriller Unknown Origins or Origenes Secretos. It's directed by David Galan Galindo and stars Javier Ray, Veronica Echugui, and Brace F. I'm Jesse. I'm here solo for this episode. Thanks for jumping into the festive spirit. This film definitely isn't very festive, though. This one's a, um, <laughs> a very interesting sort of uh, film that we'll, we'll get into very shortly. But um, if you wanted to check out this film, Unknown Origins, uh, give us a pause. Come back a little bit later on, because we're going to kick off the show with the fast flicks, where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. And as I sort of preluded to, there's quite a bit of gore in this film, so not very uh, festive at all. But this one is about a comic book-loving nerd who teams up with the police to use his knowledge to help solve crimes. So a bit of a superhero type sort of film. Uh, lots and lots of references uh, to a, a lot of different comic books in this film. So how did this film end up on Netflix? We sort of, uh, I mean, this, this story, it's actually based on the book of the same name from the director, David Galan Galindo. So he wrote the book, um, pitched the idea, got the story up and going and directed it himself. Um, Cool story, I guess. Uh, the, the film was actually scheduled to show at the 2020 Malaga Film Festival, but it was pulled um, from the schedule because the, the date uh, of the festival changed from March to August. Obviously, the pandemic at this stage, so it did hit Netflix on the 28th of August, 2020. The comic book shop that we see in this film, Jorge, he's, uh, he's our guy who loves our comics books. This was in a, in a district in Madrid. Um, it was looked like a real shop and there were people in the street who were really eager to, to actually go inside and check it out, um, believing that it was a real comic book shop. Uh, when they were told it was just a, shit, a, a set, they refused to, um, you know, to, to think that, you know, this looks too real to not be a real comic book store and they wouldn't leave. Um, and, you know, they do use a lot of real comic books in this film, so it did look genuine. Um, there were lots of kids and they refused to, to leave, so the director had to come out and sort of explain to them, no, I'm making a movie, uh, this is actually just a set. So that's a cool little story about this film. Uh, many of the, the characters in this film are named after famous Spanish comic book publishers um, that you know, um, they have the rights to publish the DC and Marvel comics in Spain and, and other um, Spanish-speaking countries. So the complex uh, that Victor Vid lives in is called Circo, which is another Spanish, uh, Spanish publishing house too that carried Marvel titles in the 1980s. So lots of little connections in this film. Probably talk about some more later, but there are lots and lots of nods to people who may, um, you know, like comics and get some of the references. Um, the beginning of the film, they also have this delivery man sort of little cameo that sort of resembles Stan Lee doing his cameos that he does in the Marvel films as well. So lots, lots of thought and effort put into this film. Translations around the world. So the, the original Spanish translation, it's also the same in Italian, Vietnamese, and Portuguese. It's called Secret Origins. In German, it's called Secret Beginnings. In Japanese, it's called The Origin of Heroes, American Comic Serial Murder Case. I like that title because this is a, it's like a tracking down a serial killer. In Polish, it's called Mysterious Origins. And in Chinese, it's called The Superhero Murder. So all good little titles are to go along with this film as well. The working title of this film was Secret Origins. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? Um, Rotten Tomatoes sits at 67%. That's on 12 reviews, so it is fresh. Uh, the audience, similar at 64%. That's on more than 100 ratings. IMDb sits at a 6.1 out of 10 on a bit about 7,500 ratings and then Letterboxd a little bit lower than those ones but sits at a 2.9 on nearly 5,000 ratings. So overall sort of sits there in that middle range mark. As mentioned this was filmed in Madrid um, in Spain. Had a lot of awards um, sort of buzz around Spain so seven nominations altogether. They're all below the line categories um, at the Goya Awards for screenplay, makeup, hairstyle, special effects. It was nominated for Best Comedy um, at the Feroz Awards, nominated for Best Original Score for an Action Adventure Thriller at the International Film Music Critic Awards, and also nominations for Best New Director and Adapted Screenplay at the Cinema Writers Circle Awards of Spain. So um, quite a few little categories there that it, that it was ticked off for. Didn't actually win any of those. So what are my early thoughts? What did I think about this one? I think um, this one didn't quite know what it wanted to be. It was sort of a little bit all over the shop in style and it was like they couldn't decide on one whether it was this comic book um, satire or, or, or um, homage to comic stories or whether it was a grisly dark crime sort of drama uh, and, and this sort of impacts it because it could have been a decent movie it's, a, it's an original sort of idea just sort of was all over the shop in the style and didn't know whether i was supposed to be laughing or taking it seriously so that, that's where i sit for this one um 
the characters. David Valentin, he's uh, this young, ambitious cop. We find out that he's sort of orphaned at a young age, a bit like Batman. So, you know, he wants to do the right thing by society, track down baddies. He doesn't have time for anything in his life. No time for friends, no time for love. He's got no family um, until he sort of decides that, you know, he likes his boss, <laughs> who is Norma. Uh, so Norma is the head of this homicide department in, um, in Madrid. Uh, she sort of works alongside as David's boss and works as this other guy called uh, Cosme and Cosme we'll talk about in a second but he's sort of um, heading towards retirement age so she forces him into retirement because she knows he's terminally ill she's into cosplay she's into comics and she does all the costumes for the people at the comic book store too so a um, very strong leader in the in the police force um, and commands authority but also has that nerdy side I guess of her as well um, and that leads us to Jorge. Um, Jorge is Cosme's son, who I mentioned before. Um, he sort of seems to do nothing with his life other than read comics and run a comic book store. Uh, he's sort of like very self-conscious that, you know, he's never going to impress his dad because his brother um, passed away. He was a cop, died on the job. And because Jorge is not a cop himself, he feels like he's letting his father down. So, uh, you know, the, the idea that he does join the police force, he teams up with David because of his knowledge of, of comic books. And that sort of, you know, allows that connection with his father to resume uh, Cosme because, you know, like we mentioned before, he's, he's terminally ill, moving into retirement um, and a very stubborn man. Um, Another person I'll mention, and if you've seen the film, you understand why, but uh, Bruguera is the, the autopsy dude at the police station. So that character you see in CSI or NCIS that, that plays that role of... of uh, progressing the plot by explaining what's actually happened to the body. So, uh, yeah, interesting there. All right, the director, David Galan Galindo. Actually got quite a few credits. Got 25 directing credits, uh, 33 writing credits as well. TV, film, shorts, none that I've heard of, but obviously um, he's done quite a bit of work. So that's that's a little bit of an interesting thing there. Um, the scenes, let's talk about some scenes I enjoy. So for me, the, the credits um, after the opening scene were super cool, really artistic, horror-like images that sort of set the scene for me to think, oh, this is going to be a bit of a dark sort of thriller. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, the, the theme of this film was all up and, up and about. Uh, David, he rocks up to the first murder scene and sort of um, vomits because he's not used to seeing the gore and the, the blood and that sort of stuff. And then he tries to catch the vomit in his hands. It was just disgusting. It made me laugh. I thought that was funny. Uh, David... Uh, he's in the gym <laughs> and, you know, he's really frustrated with all these nerds and comic book and all these crimes that have to do with comic heroes. And, uh, yeah, he's just like in the gym and there's this ad for comic books on the TV and he just punches the punchy bag really hard. I thought that was quite funny. The Human Torch is uh, mentioned in this film. There's a scene with the Human Torch. Uh, that was epically gross. Uh, I enjoyed seeing David covered in goo at one stage too. I thought that was good. Uh, some things I didn't like. I think um, Jorge's... Um, butt crack was used as a running gag wasn't funny at all just not needed didn't didn't add to anything uh, the idea that david's parents murders sort of connect to the crime for a bit was way too far-fetched um especially when they go through the police files and it looks like there's this newly printed article and <laughs> david's response is you know impossible impossible and starts throwing stuff around having a, a hissy fit it was laughable i get why it looked like it was newly printed because that adds to the plot but it just it made the whole idea really dumb um the Paco, uh, so he's this seedy sort of dude who does uh, dodgy comic sales. I just thought all of his scenes were gross. David kissing Norma, his boss, that just felt out of place. Um, Cosme, uh, Cosme, the you know the detective who's retired, he gets back on the case and he's reading all these important files. And there were some words there that felt really lost in context because I couldn't read the text and the subtitle felt insufficient. So I felt like I was missing something. Um, just a, a little side note, I guess, for an international film. Uh, the last thing, Norma. Uh, Norma was trying to go um, with David for this last battle. She's like, wants to keep him, wants to support him, doesn't want him to die. And she's gone on about how much she loves him, how much she wants him back alive. Just felt really lame, really poor. All right, themes, ideas. What's this film saying? Um, comic book geeks. <laughs> I mean, they tried to say that, you know, they're, they're humans too. They're great contributors to society. They're not just nerds who, you know, don't socialize or, or aren't intelligent. So that was, that was a... A big message i think and that idea of a hero too what makes a hero you know the idea that police officers cops they're heroes they're fighting corruption they're trying to uphold this system and that goes hand in hand with um what superheroes are too i guess in comic books what i take away from this one i think um you know i think credit needs to be paid for all the references both visually and through the dialogue to comic books and, and that that world you could watch this film multiple times and still not pick up on all of them i think so i have to say um 
you know, the, the first time that I did see this comic book store that I mentioned before that people thought was so real, I, I wrote in my notes, I was like, did they steal the set from the Big Bang Theory? It literally looked like that comic book store that they visit in that show. So um, credit because, you know, they, they do a good job of tying in lots and lots of references. All right, I'm ready to wrap this up. So we give the film a rating out of five for me. I think I sort of touched on it. They tried to mash like this crime nor detective film with the comic book or superhero genre. Kudos for trying, but unfortunately it, it just didn't quite land for me. Uh, just too many awkward moments due to the, the constant tonal shifts, you know, either stick with comedy or stick with that thriller idea because the two together just wasn't done well enough. So I'm still giving it a two and a half out of five, two and a half out of five for me. So, um, an okay score. Um, I feel maybe it feels a little bit higher. Do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. I, it wasn't horrendous. It wasn't the best thing I've ever seen, but, uh, Nah, oh. <laughs> oh, I don't usually do this on air. I think I'm going to give it a two. I'm going to drop it. Two, two out of five for me. Two out of five for this film because it just doesn't, it just doesn't actually land that well. So two out of five for me. We're on socials. We've got Twitter form on X, which is formerly known as Twitter. We've got Facebook and Instagram. Just wanted to ask: Is the superhero genre as film dead? We're going to put that on the post for this this episode. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell this year. The Marvel films have all done pretty poorly. The DC films haven't done too well. Is it time for creative control at studios to move on? Try something different. I don't know. I, um, I'm tr- just trying to think of the Marvel films from this year that sort of stood out. I guess Guardians 3 was probably one of the better ones. But apart from that, the Ant-Man one was pretty ordinary. There hasn't been a lot of great ones this year. So let us know what you think. We're back again tomorrow for our next day of Podmas. We've got another international film. It's uh, from 2020. It's the German superhero film called Freaks. You're one of us. Or excuse my German, Freaks, Die Bist ein von uns. It's uh, directed by Felix Binder. It stars Finlay Berger, Thelma Boabeng, and Giza Fleike. That's what we've got tomorrow. Interested? Another superhero film. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. Two in a row. Uh, could be interesting. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow.